When Australian sugarcane farmers had problems with beetles devouring their crops, they devised a cutthroat strategy of introducing cane toads into the local ecosystem. The amphibian had garnered a reputation across the world for an insatiable appetite for the sugar-obsessed beetles, and many farmers believed that these toads were a safer alternative to harsh chemical pesticides available at the time. The plan ended up backfiring on them, as the toads quickly reproduced out of control, becoming a larger problem than the beetles they were introduced to deal with in the first place. Any species that is introduced into a new environment has the potential to become an invasive species, though they usually don't come with any danger to human populations. Recently, we've encountered a new invasive species in North America, the giant Asian hornet, or as they've been so alarmingly dubbed, murder hornets. But are they as dangerous as their name might suggest? If you think you see a giant Asian hornet, please alert local ecology experts, and they'll be able to handle it for you. Otherwise, you can avoid them by refraining from having sugary drinks outdoors and just by leaving them to their own devices. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. Vespa manda... manda... um... Mandarinia, like the mandarin. Mandarinia. Mandarinia. Oh, cool, thanks. Hey, no problem. Vespa mandarinia, or the giant Asian hornet, are part of the Vespidae family, which includes all wasps. Of the creatures that we call hornets, most are actually different wasp species. In fact, all hornets are wasps, but not all wasps are hornets. The only true hornets are those in the genus Vespa. Hornet is just a name to classify the largest species of wasps. So what? All jacuzzis are hot tubs, but not all hot tubs are jacuzzis? Hornets are typically much larger and chubbier than their wasp counterparts, and sometimes forgo the usual yellow-black coloration for white-black. The giant Asian hornet, in particular, is about 3.5 to 5 centimeters long, with a wingspan between 4 to 7 centimeters, situating it firmly as the largest hornet species on Earth. They have solid black or brown eyes, and a large mandible with a black tooth that they use to burrow in the ground. Both workers and queens have reproductive organs, but workers do not reproduce. The only difference between royalty and peasantry is size, as opposed to bees which have distinct anatomical differences between each caste. Giant Asian hornets typically live in low mountainous and forested areas primarily in Southeast Asia, and most predominantly in Japan. Unlike other wasps or bees, V. mandarinia uses their big mandibles to dig burrows underground, and sometimes even appropriate the homes of small rodents instead of making hives at elevation. Imagine a minefield, except instead of exploding, you're swarmed by a thousand angry hornets. Giant hornets are insectivorous omnivores that primarily feed on beetles, other vespids, and bees. However, they also have a penchant for the natural sugars in sap and fruit. Though, interestingly enough, adult worker hornets cannot digest solid foods. Any solids they consume are fed to larvae via trophallaxis, aka the transfer of food either mouth to mouth or mouth to- Anuses! Jeez! Ah! Workers get their caloric intake by sipping on sap and on the saliva of their larvae. Sometimes, starving workers will hug other workers tight and pass foodstuffs back and forth between them to feed. Oh, oh, kind of like the lady in the tramp? Uh, yeah, except instead of spaghetti, it's chewed up balls of flesh. Yeah, here, let me. There, that's better. Huh. But why are you like this? Giant Asian hornets are also eusocial, which means that they live among multiple generations, rear their young collectively, and have distinct reproductive and non-reproductive classes. Giant hornets are also unique as they're the only eusocial wasp species that will coordinate attacks on other insect hives, including bee nests and other wasps. These invasions usually occur near the end of summer, right before their mating season, in order to ensure a plentiful bounty for the new generation and to stockpile food for the winter. These attacks take place over the course of three phases, the first of which is dubbed the hunting phase. This phase sees giant hornets waiting at the entrance to an enemy hive, marking it with pheromones and snatching up any wayward foes to bring them home to feed their larvae. This phase can go on indefinitely, and progression to the next phase is dependent on the distance between the home hive and the enemy hive. The next phase, the slaughter, 
is as horrible as it sounds. At this time, anywhere from 2 to 50 hornets will zero in on a hive marked with pheromones secreted by a worker scout. The invading army will surround an enemy hive and wait by the entrance for defenders to rally for war. As the guards emerge from the hive, the hornets will swarm and tear them limb from limb. Up to 50% of the attackers may die in a hornet-on-hornet -hornet war, but any bee colonies unlucky enough to bear the brunt of a slaughter will usually fall without striking a single casualty on the raiders. During this phase, the hornets will ignore the corpses of their enemies, and occasionally the slaughter will go on for so long that the invading soldiers die of starvation before the day is won. If the hornets succeed in butchering their prey, then the occupation can begin. This is the final phase of the giant Asian hornets invasion season, and the hornets become hyper-territorial over their plunder. Many workers will sleep in occupied territory as they grind the bodies of their rivals and their progeny into balls of bug meat to feed their new generation of queens gestating at home. So, all of that is pretty horrible, but the question still stands. Just how dangerous are these bugs to us? If you saw our video on ants, you might recall Justin Schmidt and Coyote Peterson, our two favorite gluttons for punishment. While Schmidt's insect sting pain index might not have the giant Asian hornet on its list, Peterson set out to determine where it should be placed. That is, on a sliding scale from one being almost unnoticeable, like a mosquito bite, and four being, well, abject torment, like the sting of the bullet ant. Oh man, wave of dizzying is really quick. Ah! Look at the welt, shooting pain. Does the pain of the giant Asian hornet translate to higher fatality rates though? According to Akito Kawahara, an associate professor with the University of Florida, not necessarily. Having grown up in Japan, he notes that these creatures were responsible for less than 13 deaths per year for 2017 and 2018. On top of that, Kawahara argues that Japanese people spend a lot of time in the woods doing things like shinrin-yoku, or forest bathing, which is the woodland equivalent of sunbathing. So the likelihood of the average Japanese person to encounter one of these monsters is high, yet the number of deaths remain relatively low, which is good to hear. Wait, they only kill like 13 people a year in Japan? Actually, yep. You're statistically more likely to die by lightning strike or horse riding accident than you are to die getting stung by a giant hornet, even if you lived smack dab in the middle of their habitat. That is, if you're not allergic. Well, why the hell are they call murder hornets then, bro? Well, they're called murder hornets because people like drama. Do you remember Africanized killer bees from the 90s? They weren't killers at all. They were just bees. And similarly, these hornets aren't murderers. They're just hornets. The problem with the giant Asian hornet is that they've been accidentally introduced to the environments that don't have a niche for them. Kawahara notes that only about 2% of cargo containers are searched for pests and invasive species. So it's altogether likely that these giant hornets just slipped in under the radar. See, when people say murder hornets, they're thinking that they murder humans. But as we learned from the slaughter phase earlier, we're not the ones that they're beheading. Ecologists fear that since these giant hornets have no natural predators in North America, their population could spiral out of control. If their population booms, they would compete amongst themselves for food, and possibly decimate the honeybee population in the crossfire. But, but Bru, there, aren't there bees in Japan too? Why, why isn't it a problem there? The species of honeybee endemic to North America, Apis mellifera, doesn't have any defense mechanisms against the sort of attack that the giant Asian hornet can mount. The Japanese honeybee, or Apis serrana japonica, on the other hand, does. When a Japanese honeybee colony discovers a giant hornet scout in the hunting phase of their invasion season, they quickly sound the alarm, calling for hundreds of worker bees to surround their attacker in a tight sphere faster than it can kill them or mark their hive for invasion. Once they've captured their assailant, the workers begin beating their wings, generating friction, and raising the temperature and amount of CO2 around the hornet. Temperatures can climb as high as 46 degrees Celsius, which quickly roasts the hornet to death, but leaves the bees relatively unscathed. But Western honeybees are still left defenseless. So, what can we do? British Columbia's Department of Agriculture has plans to set hornet traps around the province to curb the spread of this invasive species. Using a sheet of sticky cardboard around a small cut in a tree, the BC government hopes to lure the giant hornets to their adhesive doom. 
However, the impact of all traps may not be felt just by these intruders, but by all insect species. Many scared individuals have been setting out traps using orange juice and rice wine, which unfortunately also attracts bees. So traps might end up harming the local ecosystem rather than protecting it. All invasive species have the potential to become serious problems in the ecosystems they're introduced to. The cane toad was purposefully brought to Australian shores to deal with pests, but in the end they became worse than the problem itself. It's yet to be seen if these hornets could survive a North American winter. If they can, then it would be possible for them to establish a foothold in Canada and the United States, entrenching themselves into the local ecosystem and damaging local biodiversity. That being said, experts hope to contain the species until the weather cools off, and most believe that the frost should wipe them out. But until then, if we ever find ourselves face to face with one, we'll just have to remember. If stings have been nil, then simply stand still. But if stingers have stunned, get ready to run. I'm sorry, did we miss something? Yeah, sort of. A few weeks ago, we hit our 500k milestone, and some of you decided to bring the celebration to us. I don't think I alone have the words to express what this means to us, but I'm not alone. I never really have been. Thank you, everyone. You're all beautiful. I just want to say thanks, everyone. You're all breathtaking. Is it just me, or is this art, like, real good? No, girl, you're right. Our fans are some talented people. Hey everybody, it's me, it's Chillin' Do- no, 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 I'm gonna say this with my voice, I guess, but uh, thanks to every one of you, you're great, and we appreciate it. Thank you to everyone who made this possible, and for always staying curious. You guys are just awesome. Here's to one million. Thank you, from all of us. So, do you have somewhere you need to be, or...? No, actually, I, I'm not too sure what we're supposed to do. Well, normally we wait for the outro music, and then the episode just sort of stops. Cool. Okay. Ah, see, look, there it is.